Thanks for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to introduce our work, Furion, Engineering High-Quality Immersive Virtual Reality on today's mobile devices. This is a joint work with Charlie and my, oh, sorry, my advisor, Yong, and Lin Hui and Ming Wei. So recently, we have seen a lot of interesting virtual reality apps, such as entertainment, education, healthcare, and social networks. It is predicted that by 2020, there will be more than 30 billion annual revenue in the virtual reality market. A typical VR system consists of three key components, a VR handset, a controller, and a renderer. The handset checks user's pose, and the controller captures user's gesture so that the user can interact with the app. And the renderer renders high quality frames for display. To support acceptable user experience, modern VR systems have to meet three critical performance requirements. First, we need good responsiveness, which means low interactive latency. Second, we need high quality, we need high quality, uh, sorry. Second, we need high quality visual effects to support immersive experience. And finally, the VR systems or at least, or at least the handset components should be untethered to, in order to support the ultimate VR experience. But unfortunately, all existing high-end VR systems are tethered. They stream data from a powerful PC to a handset via HDMI cable. They provide good visual, visual quality and responsiveness, but at the cost of mobility. This is because the capability of today's mobile hardware and wireless technology is limited. Therefore, in this work, we ask the question, can we enable high quality VR on today's mobile device and wireless network? Before I introduce our solution, let me first show our measurement study to understand the QoE gap between the idea goal and today's achievable performance. In our measurement study, we explore two straightforward approaches to support mobile VR, local rendering and remote rendering. We first look at the local rendering, which means render all VR contents in the mobile device. We select four Daydream apps and three high quality VR games from the Unity store. We run each, of each app on a Google Pixel phone and we measure their frame latency. Then we use a value, we call it brisk value from the graphic community to quantify the visual effects. This table shows the achievable QoE of local rendering. We make two observations. First, when the visual quality increases, we found that the FPS decreases and the frame latency increases. Second, we found that the local rendering is not durable for high quality VR. Their average FPS is about 10, and the average frame latency is about 100 milliseconds. The root cause is that the mobile GPU is exhausted under the heavy rendering workload. Then we explore the second design point to support mobile VR, remote rendering. That means we offload entire rendering workload to a nearby server. Specifically, we render frames by a strong desktop and we stream the frames to the phone using 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. This table shows the latency breakdown for three high quality VR apps. We have found that for remote rendering, the frame latency is more than 200 milliseconds because current wireless networks cannot provide sufficient bandwidth to transfer high quality frames in high frame rates. Given that neither local rendering nor remote rendering can support, can, can support untethered VR on today's commodity mobile device and hardware networks, we ask the question, we are waiting for tomorrow's mobile hardware and wireless networks help? In terms of hardware, we argue that future CPU GPU is unlikely to help because of the power constraint. This figure plus the evolution of the CPU, GPU in high-end mobile smartphone in recent five years. The CPU, GPU of mobile handsets will not grow significantly more powerful because of the power constraint. In addition, 
we argue that the future wireless network is also unlikely to directly help due to the significant packet processing overhead. This figure shows the total CPU utilization of the Pixel smartphone under different TCP throughputs. We observe that the CPU utilization is already 27% under 400 Mbps TCP throughputs in this Google Pixel phone. But streaming high quality VR frames in high FPS requires about 6 Gbps throughput according to a previous study. Such a high throughput will exhaust the commodity mobile CPU. Given that, for, given that waiting for future mobile hardware or next generation wireless networks is unlikely to directly help, we argue that the likely path to support untethered high quality VR apps is software innovation. Then let me introduce our solution, the Furion design. We first re explore the video compression to reduce the frame latency. We use three compression schemes in remote rendering, MJPEG, H.264, and VP9. This table shows the latency breakdown for remote rendering with different compression schemes. We observed that the frame transmission time is significantly reduced from 200 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds and the best compression scheme only involves 16 milliseconds additional decoding latency. It seems very helpful, but is it? However, I think it is still not enough if you look at the whole end-to-end -end latency. Using a video compression, now the frame latency is about 48 milliseconds and contains five components. These five components are the request latency, rendering latency, encoding latency, transmission latency, and decoding latency. None of them is easy to be reduced. But our goal, but our goal, is, but our goal is 16 millisecond latency for one frame. How to bridge the 3x latency gap? Maybe we need some VR-specific insights. So after studying on more than 100 VR applications on Google Play and the Unity Store, we obtained two VR-specific insights. The first insight is, for most of VR apps, the VR contents can be divided into foreground interactions and background environments. Interactions, for example, the razor in this figure, are triggered by operating the controller. The background environment, for example, the cloud and mountain in, the, in this figure, is updated according to the user's movement. Further, Interactions and environments have contrasting predictability and rendering workloads. The animations of foreground interactions are random and hard to predict. In contrast, the background environment changes continuously and is predictable. In terms of rendering workloads, foreground interactions are much more lightweight compared to the background environments. This table shows the frame latency and CPU GPU usage when we only render interactions or environments on the phone. We can see that the latency is much lower and the CPU, GPU usage is also much lower if we only render the interactions on the phone. This is because the realistic, immersive environments in high quality VR apps contains rich details and complex textures. Therefore, Based on the key insights in our Furion design, we first proposed the cooperative rendering approach to render interactions and environments. Specifically, when we read the input from the user, we first use the local GPU to render the foreground interactions. We use the remote GPU on the server to render the background environments. And we combine them on the phone. The key advantage of cooperative rendering is that the latency of interactions is significantly reduced, but the latency of fetching background from server, which includes request, rendering, encoding, transmission, and decoding, is still 48 milliseconds. How can we reduce the latency of fetching background? So basically, the virtual world is discretized using a grid layout. When we move in the virtual world, fundamentally, we are moving from one old position to an adjacent position. In each position, we can rotate the handsets to change the orientation. 
Here, we leverage two optimizations to reduce, to reduce the latency of background environment. First, since the movement is continuously predictable, we leverage the movement's delay to prefetch nearby frames. But in each position, the user can still change the orientation of the hand sites, and the orientation is hard to predict. Therefore, second, we use pre-rendered and pre-encoded panoramic frames to batch all possible orientations in a specific position. For example, as we can see in this figure, initially the user stands at position zero. Meanwhile, the client prefetches the panoramic frames at position one, two, three, and four. Next time, when the user moves to position three, the panoramic frame of position three has already been fetched, and the client starts to prefetch the panoramic frames in position five, six, and seven. Prefetch, prefetch helps to hide the transmission latency over the network. But decoding one panoramic frame takes about 40 milliseconds on the phone. So to further reduce the decoding latency, we propose a parallel decoding to accelerate the decoding process. Specifically, we divide one panoramic frame into four segments and leverage the multi-core on the smartphone to concurrently decode them. Now the rendering process looks like this. Every time we first read the user input, the local GPU renders foreground interactions, and the client requests the panoramic frames for, for the next position, and puts the, pre and puts the prefetched frame in a cache. Simultaneously, the frame for current position is already prefetched in the cache, so we only need to decode the panoramic frame in the cache and crop the panoramic frame to generate the final frame for a specific orientation. And finally, we merge the foreground interactions and background environments on the phone to generate the final frame. Now, the total latency of one frame is under 16 milliseconds. Next, let me show the performance evaluation of Furion. In our evaluation, we mainly focus on the visual quality, responsiveness, scalability, and the resource usage. We implement Furion using Unity, Google Daydream SDK, and X264 library. We port three high-quality VR apps, Viking Village, Corridor, and the Nature into our Furion platform. We compare the performance of Furion with the mobile rendering version and the syncline version, which offloads all rendering workloads to the server. We use the SSIN value from the graphic community to quantify the visual quality. A higher SSIN value indicates a better visual quality here. As we can see in this table, Furion can achieve better visual quality and higher FPS compared to other solutions. We also measure the latency for two typical VR operations like foreground interactions and background motion. As we can see in this figure, Furion can obtain lower latency compared to other solutions. Here, I want to, we also prepared a video to show the achievable performance in practice. This is the performance on the local rendering. As we can see, the FPS is low, the latency is high, and it looks sluggish. And this video shows the same VR app under our Furion. As we can see, the FPS is much higher, the latency is lower, and the visual quality looks much better. Okay. So we also evaluated the scalability of Furion, which means how many foreground interactions can Furion support. We have found that Furion can maintain high FPS even when the number of interaction, foreground in interactions increases. Here's the resource usage of Furion in different apps and in different phones, and we can find that Furion incurs acceptable system overhand on mobile devices. We also evaluate the thermal performance and the battery drain of Furion, and Furion will not hit the thermal limit within 30 min min minutes usage. Finally, let me conclude our work. So in this work, we developed Furion, a VR framework that enables high-quality immersive VR, mobile VR on today's mobile devices and wireless networks. Furion design is based on a split, split, split a rendering architecture re leveraging a key insight from VR, uh, the contrasting nature of foreground interactions and background environments. And our implementation of Furion on top of Unity and Google Daydream confirms that Furion can achieve, achieve acceptable QoE on commodity phones. And that's all. Thank you very much.